In 1915, Albert Einstein presented his theory of general relativity. One year later, he predicted one consequence of his theory is that gravitational waves should exist. Although Einstein himself didn't believe in it, scientists have been working for the past five decades to detect them. After 100 years, with the help of a large number of students and postdocs at Cardiff and elsewhere, we have made the first direct detection of gravitational waves and the first discovery of binary black holes. So what are gravitational waves? We like to call them ripples in the fabric of space and time. Any time an object, any object in the universe is moving, or more strictly accelerating, it will release gravitational waves. And these will move away from the object at the speed of light and spread out. And as they do, as they actually stretch and shrink the distances between objects. But the effect is absolutely minuscule. And to make a gravitational wave you have any hope of detecting, you need very, very heavy, very massive objects moving pretty much at the speed of light. The gravitational wave signal that we measured was produced by two black holes whirling around each other and colliding and merging to form one huge black hole. We know that's what happened because we've spent the last 10 years solving Einstein's equations on a computer to work out exactly what happens when two black holes meet. These two black holes were orbiting around each other, much like the Earth orbits around the Sun, but much, much closer and much, much faster. Each of these black holes was 10 million times more massive than our Earth, but squashed into a ball the size of Iceland. They were whirling around each other so fast that in only a two tenths of a second, they orbited each other five times and they spiraled in over this distance of several thousand kilometers to meet. And when they met, it produced a gravitational wave signal even stronger than what had been given off before. This was the most powerful event that we have ever observed in the universe. So the two black holes we've heard about merged over a billion years ago in a galaxy that's a billion light years away. And since then, the signal's been traveling towards the Earth, and it finally reached us in September of 2015. The lane divider here helps us see the waves in the water as the divider moves up and down. The LIGO detectors use a laser. They split the laser into two beams, which travel down two arms in an L-shaped tube. As the gravitational wave passes through, one of the arms gets a bit longer and the other gets a bit shorter. And we can sense that with the laser. The challenge is that the effect is extremely tiny. The change in the length of the arms is about one one hundred millionth the size of an atom. And so we have to pick that tiny signal out from the cacophony of noise background caused by things like traffic moving near the detectors, ground motion from earthquakes on the other side of the world, or waves crashing into the distant coastlines. Here at Cardiff, we work on some of the algorithms that are used to sift through the data and to pull these weak signals out using supercomputers such as the ARCA cluster. For millennia, man has looked up at the sky and seen the stars. And over the years, we've learned to look with radio and ultraviolet and gamma ray. But these are all different kinds of light. Finally, we've seen something from the stars that's completely different. There's a gravitational wave, and this is like turning on the sound to the universe. Every time we've looked in the universe in a new way, we've seen these new things, new events we didn't expect. Hundreds of years ago, when we first pointed telescopes at the sky, we discovered new stars and new planets. Last century, when we turned on radio telescopes, we learned about the origins of the universe. With gravitational waves, we're right at the start of that journey. We've detected one event, but there are many more to come. It's a very exciting time.